I cannot express how lucky and honored I am to have been able to talk to some of Father Bray's former players. I could feel the presence of Father Bray in the room as he shared stories and answered our questions. Our time spent with Father Bray's players was very enjoyable, especially because of the personal interaction. Reading stories was one thing, but seeing the expression the players had on their faces and their reactions to our questions was much better than a reading. It was eerie how we were actually at Father Bray's grave. We read all about the man, but to fully realize he was a human being who accomplished all these amazing feats and actually walked the grounds of the Nu'uanu campus was astounding. It's touching to see that his players were willing to come to his grave and speak to our class. The literature of sport started in 2003, and it was started with the belief that if you had subject matter that kids high school age were already really interested in, they get more excited about reading. So it would actually help them become uh, better readers, better writers, better thinkers. So it's really just like any other literature elective at Iolani, the difference is that it uses uh, material that deals with sports. Over the summer, the students read The Old Man, which is a biography of Father Bray written by Don Johnson. He co-wrote it with Ronald Oba, who um, knew Father Bray and was at school uh, when Father Bray was here. You know, in the book, they're reading a lot about these specific Iolani graduates who were students and, and football players. Well, not just football players, basketball and baseball players too back then. And it, it seemed just logical to go out in the community and uh, invite them to come in. And as you, you know, as you say, it brings the book to life. So there could be someone sitting next to a student uh, whom the student read about, and he's telling the students what it was like to know Father Ray, what it was like to play for him, what it was like uh, to know him as a person, um, or even as, as a teacher. I think uh, one of the highlights of my relationship with Father Ray was uh, uh, during our senior basketball year, uh, which uh, ended up with championship. You watch people play basketball today, especially in a professional situation. Uh, they ad lib you know, rather than run plays. With Father Bray, uh, we had a very good captain, uh, Walter Taguma. He's uh, very disciplined, and so he was a point guard. And they run a play, and if the play didn't work, it come out to him again, and they'll start another play. And this is how Father Bray played. Uh, he, he wanted the team to perform that way, because if you run a play and everybody does his job, you, they're going to be successful. It, it applied to football as well as basketball. I'm sure in baseball too. Well, my relationship was very different from football players and and uh, basketball and baseball players because I didn't play varsity football. I did play JV football, but my coach was Bill Singh, not Father Bray. When I had to make the decision to not play varsity football in my senior year, uh, I was torn. I really wanted to play, but I had been offered this opportunity to be an entertainer. It was a Hawaiian show, and we went up and down the West Coast so I was sitting on the slope between the gym and the lower practice field, and all of a sudden, here comes Father Bray and sits down next to me. And he said, David, I would like you to play football next year, but I know you're facing a problem, aren't you? And I said, yes, sir. I've got to make a decision. And he said, well, that's really important. You know, all through our lives, we're faced with having to make decisions between two things we want to do. Uh, when I made up my mind, I went in to see him, and I told him, and he knew I was really upset because I had tears coming out when I told him. And he put his arm around me. He said, that's okay, Dave. You, you made a good decision. That's what you should do. He was so really pastoral in the way he dealt with me in that situation. He was a warm, friendly guy. I've been going here since kindergarten and I didn't know much about him. Like I knew he helped out with the football program and he was 
a pioneer when it came to sports here and everything, but I didn't know the exact stories and what he accomplished through Ilani and how many years he was here and just how grateful all his players are to him to this day, even though he's not here and they still visit his grave. When I was picking out courses for my senior year, I saw the title Literature of Sport and I thought, oh, this is interesting. I never had the opportunity to take a class that talked about sports, so I was really interested about it. So when most people think about sports, they actually think about watching a game or like seeing the thing happen right in front of you. So I thought it was pretty neat how Mr. Greenhill taught us not only what football was, but he also expanded and talked more about how that affected us in like the bigger picture. And I thought that was really cool. So it started off with Father Bray, who taught Eddie Hamada, who eventually taught Coach Young, and also taught Coach Look. I had Coach Look as a coach, and I could see through his example just how the things correlated because the lessons that we learned from Coach Look were very similar to what I learned in that class with Father Bear. I'm part of the paddling team, so of course paddling is a team sport, especially because there's just six of us in the canoe, so we really need to work together. And even though our coaches do tell us, oh, one team, you know, work together, like it's kind of like understood for us as athletes as well as like just students of Iolani that we need to like work together because we can't do everything by ourselves. So just having other people to help us, guide us through whatever obstacles or just going through life, that's really important. So when we went to the Punchbowl grave site where Father Bray was, there was a lot of his former players there and it just showed how much they cared for him. And it was a simple grave site among all the other graves and it just showed who he was as a person. It was really special to be able to see where he was, and I know Mr. Greenhill talked about it and how fitting it was for him to be where it was next to a bunch of other soldiers because he always taught about being humble, so it was fitting for him to be buried with other soldiers, fellow soldiers that fought along with him. You know, when you're an old man, you wonder what they're thinking about old men talking, but I, I think the value in the experience is going to come afterward when they reflect on, on what was said in relation to their own lives here at the school and in, in the future. To this day, I'm still trying to live out to what he is trying to teach us. And uh, I like to think I did had some success, but I don't really know, but I keep on trying. You know, and I think I owe that to him because he played a great part in my life. It still does today.